It's fantastic. <laughs> okay, so for the record, please state your name. Uh, my name is Debbie. Excellent. Can you please share your story. I, I would turn towards you if I didn't have such pain in my shoulder. That's quite I right. turn at the waist level. Oh, you can, you can talk or to I the camera if you'd like. That's fine. So, this one time at Burning Man, as they start so often, one of my campmates had designed a go-ped uh, toilet seat. So it was really a straightforward design. It was a go-ped and gas powered and put it to the seat. And so you can sit on the seat and ride in the go-ped. Okay. Which was great. <laughs> Unfortunately, the DMV didn't think it had any artistic merit, <laughs> so they told him he couldn't drive around the city, which was pretty hysterical in and of itself. So I would ride the go-ped toilet to the porta potty just park it outside. People would be like, uh, can I do this? I don't understand. Um, so on one particular evening, I was riding it out to play super soft sand, super soft to see play, wearing cape. There are these little foot pedals on the side so I could ride it. The wind is blowing my cape behind me. I feel like I'm absolutely in the middle of absolutely nowhere. The stars are out. It's spectacular. The breeze is in my hair. I'm riding the toilet. Everything is right in the world. Until some fucking idiot who unlit up with his unlit bike appeared out of nowhere in front of me. Oh, no. And I hit it and flipped over the front of the toilet handlebars. My first thought was, fuck you, fucking dark well, light your bike. And then the next thought was, ow, as I ate dust and sprawled, like, you know, like a corpse picture outlined with the toilet seat pinning my leg. Oh, no, pinned by a toilet. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm in the middle of nowhere. And within seconds, there are half a dozen people over me going, how many fingers am I holding up? What's your name? <laughs> like, do you know where you are? Yeah. Toilet <laughs> Get the toilet off of me! So I can only imagine people coming upon me seeing this sight. And I had pretty significantly um, hit my uh, wrist. And uh, out of the people around me, it, and I was at this point probably a good half a mile to three quarters of a mile out. I was almost out. Uh, I was like way past the temple. And uh, somebody offered to walk the go ped back because it was so much sand had gotten in it, it couldn't start it. Um, Someone else gave me a, a beautiful scarf to fling at my wrist, um, and I uh, later the next day tried to return it to her. I found her camp, and it just never happened. So I, to this day, I still have it. I use it as decoration in my house. And uh, someone else had a little golf cart car, like, and they gave me a, a ride back to the med tent. It was one of the only actual injuries in there, I think, at that hour. <laughs> Everyone else was dehydration or oh, too much of something. Um, and I, so they were like, "Yeah, it's solidly sprained." don't do anything with it. <laughs> I was like, all right. So as I had to explain for the next couple of days why I was favoring my wrist, and I basically just, the next day, I pushed the pain to the side um, uh, for a good 24 hours. And so after that 24-hour period, I was like, okay, now it's time to deal with this. <laughs> all because of the toilet. All because of the toilet. In fact, it wasn't the toilet's fault. It was the endless like fault, and that is the moral. The moral of the story is no dark watts. No dark watts. Don't, don't leave your unlit, unmarked bike in the middle of the fly because someone's bound to run over it with their toilet. That's my story. That was a fantastic story. Give me a hug. Uh,